you're not just moving Lattimore for anything. What would you consider an yeah. uh, acceptable trade package to get a guy it, like that out the city? And, and this is everything. And it look, like I said before, I will reiterate it. I need something now. Yeah. I need something today. I need something when he leaves the building, I get something in return that I'm going to see on the football field in 2024. And just so, a quick example for that. The reason why you don't want to play the long game there, a lot of people before the season considered the Los Angeles Rams they were going to be the worst team in the league. Last mm-hmm. year, at the beginning of last year, the Rams were supposed to be bottom feeders. The Rams had a pretty darn good season. Yeah. Imagine if you invest in one of those Rams picks thinking it's going to be top three, top five. Look at where it wound up. So, yeah, you don't want to play that long game. You want that pick right now yeah, with the draft. Absolutely. Upcoming. That's a great point. I mean, you don't know where that pick is going to end up in the future year, whereas this year you obviously know and you need something in return for a guy like Marshawn Lattimore. So, look. Make no mistake about it. The Saints have a little bit of leverage here in terms of they can be choosy in terms of what uh, compensation, what they want. And if they, they don't get close to that, then you just walk away from negotiations. But we did some some research here just on some past cornerback contracts and past cornerback uh, trades that have that have gone on. And honestly, the nearest one was 2023, Jalen Ramsey. Last year, the Dolphins gave up a third-round pick and tight end Hunter Long to the Rams for Jalen Ramsey at 29 years old. Now, if you check Jalen Ramsey's stats, uh, the, the big money stats when it comes to interceptions and pass mm-hmm. breakups, it's a little bit higher than Marshawn Lattimore. So that's a third-round pick for a 29-year-old. Lattimore will turn 28, I believe, in May. Back in 2018, Marcus Peters, who at the time, at the time, was the best cornerback in football. I remember Drew Brees deliberately telling us we had the no Marcus Peters rule. In other words, you see Marcus Peters, you throw in the other direction. That's mm-hmm. how good that guy was at that, at that point. The Chiefs traded him, <clears throat> and uh, a second and a fourth round pick uh, was the compensation there for one of the guys who was in the prime of his career, having a uh, fantastic career at that point, a second and a fourth round pick. Uh, the first time Jalen Ramsey was traded, back in 2019, from Jacksonville to the L.A. Rams, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Two firsts Whew. and a fourth. Okay, that, that's high. That's that, that's high. Old. And that was back when the Rams were just trading and just to, they were they didn't believe in draft picks at that point. They were right. trading uh, everything. And then a couple other ones. Um, 2020. Remember A.J. Boye? Whew, that's a callback. It right was there. a disaster of a <laughs> trade. But uh, I think Denver it was. They gave up a fourth round pick for A.J. Boye. And if you go all the way back to Darrell Revis, um, that, that's a little far back. And he was the best cornerback in football at that point, coming off a torn ACL, got a first and a fourth round pick. So there was some other ones you had you had dug up as well, because there was quite, yes. there's been quite a bit when it comes to cornerback. So, yeah, you know, a lot of the, the guys you mentioned were kind of at that number one, number two cornerback mm-hmm. in the league spots. They went for first and second round picks. I was looking at guys who are kind of where you may consider Marshawn Lattimore in the mm-hmm. cornerback hierarchy. Bradley Roby, at 28 years old, was traded here mm-hmm. to the New Orleans Saints from Houston. The Saints got or gave them a third and a six rounder. Mm-hmm. J.C. Jackson, 27 years old, traded from the Patriots to the Chargers this past season. They got a six rounder in return. Now, Marshawn Lattimore is a little better than where you would consider J.C. Jackson. What was J.C. Jackson again? J.C. Jackson was a six rounder in 2023. He was okay. 27 years old. Then Darius Slay, back when he was uh, with Detroit. 29 years old, traded to the Eagles for a third and fifth round pick. Fifth round pick, yeah. So when I look at Marshawn Lattimore and when I look at what I would expect teams to offer him, it's kind of in that range, that third and fourth, third and fifth, third and sixth. You mentioned the second. I think if you can get a second from Marshawn Lattimore, that's a winning deal right there. To me right now, the deal on the table that if I were the Saints, I would accept is if someone called and offered a second round pick for Marshawn Lattimore, I would accept that right away because I think that's fair compensation for where Marshawn Lattimore is at in his career at 28 years old what he's done what the Saints could certainly use in draft compensation this year not next year this year um we start playing with third and fourth round picks if it's a high third round pick maybe but to me if you're dipping into third rounds I need some some more picks on the back end as well. I need a right. third round and a fifth, a third and a fourth, a third and a sixth. If it's a high three, maybe it's a fifth. If it's a low three, maybe it's a four. A three and a four, high three. Even that, 
that's still kind of, eh, I'm on the edge, but I might as well just keep him at that point. But if you're going to go third round or lower, it's got to be more than one pick. If it's just one pick, it's got to be a second round pick or higher for the trading, in my opinion, if I were GM of Marshall and Lattimore anywhere. And look, as this has gone on, and there's been a little bit of inaction with this, as we sit here right now, now things can certainly change. Mm-hmm. And given the way that contract is set up, to it's just weird. If they trade him before June or trade him for this year, I'm telling you, the, the cap situation, it actually hurts the Saints. Unless they can work out some weird deal where <clears throat> they can get the team trading for him to take on some of the dead money, put it on their books, and, and maybe that helps with the sliding scale of compensation. But, again, that's a complicated thing. For a clean trade of Lattimore this year, based off what it would cost, I think it's probably easier just for the Saints to keep him. And I honestly think as we sit right here, right now, I think he suits up for the Saints in 2024. I agree with you. Now, one thing I will mention, when you look at the picks, and obviously a lot of this is going to change for every team Mm -hmm. in the next month or two until the draft, right now the Saints do not have a third or a fourth round pick. Exactly. They have a first, a second, four fifths, two sixths, and a seventh round pick. So for the Saints... That's a long time to go from your pick in the middle of the second round all the way into the fifth round. That's a long time That's to a not have That's a huge way to picks. go, and this is the year they need to fill that roster with some young, cheap, really quality football players, and I think that's coming. I think the wheeling and dealing for those middle-round picks is certainly coming, especially when we get the official list of all the compensatory picks. So, yeah, I could certainly understand that. I just don't know if Marshawn Lattimore is the guy, if it's a – a late three or or a late four, that's the offer. Uh, I don't know. I, he's done so much good when he's healthy here, and I don't know if it's a sign of his health going down. It certainly felt like D.A. was a little hesitant about going there, but he does have to get healthier and be more available uh, to be the standout player that he is. But to me, this all depends on compensation, and this contract makes it a little muddier uh, for what you can actually do. So 